brothers, brothers, we're happy singing and we're colored, colored, we're happy singing and we're brothers, brothers, we're happy singing and we're colored, colored, we're happy singing and we're brothers. Yo, brothers, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Fresco of House Fresh, the first and last of his name. Hurt. You can follow me on Twitter at Fresco Ben Famous. That's B I N Famous. And on Instagram at Fresco Fame. And it's your boy, Flaw 700. Uh. AKA Flaw Claw Van Dam. Uh. AKA Flaw Seagull. Oh! AKA your boy, Dump Some Goy. Saki Yaki Yaki. Saki Sue. Uh. Saki to me. What's this, the Prince edition? Saki to you. First off, you got on your purple and you singing like Prince. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> last last week I gave him the, the deep one. You feel me? Like melt, like blue from the Temptations. You know what I mean? And we are Kelly Drake's favorite podcast, the Podcast Brothers, and this is episode one thirty nine. You dig? Or was that? Did you plan that? I mean, you got on the purple. No, I did not plan that at so, all. So you didn't know about that energy. You know about Prince and the purple. And no. Just, well, actually, I think it to myself. Well, I did. Like I said, I did the deep voice last week, so I just wanted to do something different. So I said, "Fuck." It. And Let's then, go with the loud voice. And then you and Prince actually share a birthday. That's facts. You, Prince Iverson, I believe. Me, Prince and Iverson, man. Mm. I'm great as fuck. <laughs> I don't know if you niggas knew or not, but I did. <laughs> I don't I'm know great. what y'all doing. It's just I was just born destined. in greatness. It's just destined. I think. Uh, I think it's day. No, nah, actually, his birthday is the 18th. Ooh. I mean, the 8th. Uh, I think Kendrick. Kendrick is Kendrick the Lamar. 17th. 17th? Somebody, I think Kanye, is it Kanye who birthday joined 8th? Yeah, Kanye is early too. I think so. Kanye yeah, is early. I think it's Kanye. Ice Cube is the 15th. Tupac is the 16th, like myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, Hey, you know. man, let me let me tell you motherfuckers something, right? Now, I'm, I'm not one for the Zodiac stuff, but it seems to me every time Gemini season comes around, the hate level rises. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. You know what I'm saying? The hate level rises... In catastrophic proportions, I just want you niggas to stop your shit. You feel me? And it's June now. It's June, June now. Second. It's officially Gemini season. It's no disrespect to the May Geminis. Maybe a little disrespect to the May Geminis, depending on how you feel. But June Geminis, you know what? Let me let me shout out to uh, John Salvatore, the John. Shout Fett. out to the homie. Shout John. out to all the May Geminis because we're not going to do that. Shout out to my cousin Kerry. You feel me? His birthday yeah, was just real regular. But just saying. It's, it's something like, different about it's the It's always like a fucking Taurus or like a Virgo. I'm like, ah, can we just skip past you when I see you? Yeah. That yeah, sounds like shit comes every year, baby. That, that sounds like somebody just, that just got chill they, out. They heartbroken, broke. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, if you don't like we, a heart, gym- we heartbreakers, man. Yeah. <laughs> what you want me to do? I mean, what the fuck? Tauruses ain't breaking no hearts. That's, Capricorns ain't breaking no hearts. That's the thing. That's the thing. So what is that really telling you? Who do you really fall for hardest? Who do you love the most? A Gemini. Everybody's out here breaking hearts. Everybody's out here doing stuff they got no business doing. Whether you, whether it's fact or fiction, everybody's out here doing what they do. But for some reason, the Gemini get the rap. Just right. like you spoke on last week, like, oh, I got a bad day. You must be a Gemini. No, it's a bad day. Like, right. why can't I wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Like every I don't other feel zodiac like sign. Fucking with you today. Oh, yes, that Gemini. No, bitch, it's that backhand that's about to come through <laughs> if you keep fucking with me. That's that Gemini, right there. Absolutely. Bitch. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to touch on something. And before we get into our weeks, I want to touch on something I think that we definitely should touch on, which is the the violence that's been happening in uh, the Trenton, the city of Trenton, the last week. When we left here um, last week, last Sunday, we recorded um, for the next seven days and seven nights. We were um, kind of like in the middle of a war. Don't know how it started. Um, I heard a story as to how it started, but that's hearsay. Um, a young 18-year-old by the name of Unique Anderson was murdered. Um, a total of 15 people was wounded by gunfire in the last week. Now, uh, 10 people was injured one night, five the next, uh, five a different night. So it's not like uh, 15 people got hurt in one night. But this is the um, issue that we've been dealing with in the city of Trenton. Twice or maybe three times, three times, yes, three times schools have been interrupted with the threat of a school shooting. One school, um, there was actually a weapon on the premises and a school went into lockdown. They apprehended the weapon and... I'm the, sorry, that's my son in the background, y'all. Yeah, it's we got Jason, uh, Jason. Jason in the building. <laughs> Why? Play your uh, game. One school was actually um, sh- um, in a shutdown situation where there was a weapon on the premises and they got the weapon. 
and they got the people that was involved. And then rumors started spreading that um, kids were coming to shoot up other schools. And twice it was a school that my son attended. So, excuse me, it was it was a rough one mentally. Um, my condolences to the family that lost someone, to the friends that lost someone. My son said the school was like grieving because they actually knew the kid that was murdered. Mm-hmm. So, you know... Nothing happened to them physically, but you can understand how this affects them mentally. It's a ripple effect, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, you don't have to be, it's kind of like, you know, uh, on, a, on, a, on a bigger scale, it's kind of like Nipsey passing. Like, mm. it's just, it just hits home for a lot of people. So the, the effects of that passing, and especially in, in the likes of which it happened, is what really, you know what I'm saying, it, it gets to the people's hearts. So. It's just a lot of bullshit happening, man. I mean, I don't, I never, I never understood it. I was never in the streets. I never played with guns or nothing like that. I did no crazy shit. So it's just uh, thinking that's past my understanding. I don't know, man. But um, I'm all, I'm, I'm all a part of being a part of the solution. You know what I'm saying? And not contributing to any problems. I don't know what happens or what these these people got going on in their lives that make them go in that direction, but. I don't know, man. There's got to be some. There's got to be some type of um, a, a switch that gets flipped or something like that. So we start we start taking lives more seriously because it's a big deal, man. Eighteen year olds losing their lives. You're eighteen, bro. Like mm-hmm. you ain't even begin to live yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the leaders of the city are you know doing what they can do. Uh, we haven't heard of anything in the in the last few days, but still, you know, anything could happen. Um, tomorrow, the day after, and you know, even though, like I say, our kids are here, they're still being affected mentally. So you know, therapy, talking to him. I talked to my son yesterday, and like, you know, how you holding up? And he just was like, every day it gets easier. You know, um, a few months ago, I talked to him and asked him, you know, what was going on. He said he was kind of depressed because he was losing friends. You know, like I like when things like this happen in a town. You know, kids get gunned down. Like you got to understand, like a lot of people are connected. Right. Some way, some it's hell. a small city. It's a small, it's definitely a small town. Um, so, just uh, prayers up for the people that was affected. Prayers up for the town. The question is, like, what could we do? My first uh, reaction was, you know, where are the parents? You know, for me, I only say that because people around me, I'll be 36 in a few days. Woo! We were supposed to be the era that was fed up with the era before us. Right. Like, oh, when we get babies, we're going to definitely take care of our babies. But it just seems to be, it, it don't seem that way, though. Like, there's a lot more of us fathers around our children, regardless if we are getting along with the mothers or not. You know, we know our rights more. We in court fighting for support. We in court fighting for custody and things of that nature. But then after the five fathers or however many fathers out there doing their thing, then you turn around and you realize that there are a lot of fathers not doing their thing and you just be like didn't we just come from this isn't this what we wanted to avoid right so i don't know so like i say the first thing that i um thought about was you know where are the parents where's the family because we all know we you know who's doing this you know so you know that's all it's it's just it's sad um condolences to the family and friends that are slain and the injured to the injured, you know what I'm saying? I wish y'all a speedy recovery. Shit. I know people still dealing with the effects of the RR night shooting last year. And that's coming right back around. You know what I'm saying? It's about a year anniversary for that. So that was another tragic situation where there was multiple people, um, you know what I'm saying, severely injured and unjustly arrested and things of that nature based on that event. So we got to do better, man. And those who are the outside of situations looking in, we need to be able to come up strategize and figure out how we can, you know what I'm saying, assist the communities with getting these kids with facing other alternatives, man. Mm-hmm. Street shit don't last for so long, man. It's two ways it ends. That's it. Now, you know, we don't really got the solution to how to stop the violence. But, you know, we are um, part of the town. So any part we could play, y'all know how that is. Let us know what we can do. Um and we can contribute however we can contribute. One thing you don't want to do is just being somebody you're not. Like, I'm not going to pretend like right. I know the answers just right. because I have a podcast. Right. Like, no, don't get I don't that know. I don't know like, nothing. Oh, the podcast brothers need to blah, blah, blah. No, I don't have the answers. Like, I'm taking care of mine. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that, and I don't want to sound selfish. Y'all but whoop y'all kids? Do I whoop my kids? I mean, I was, I was posing a general question, but yeah. 
No, my son got to be 18. I don't whip my, like, my daughter's going to be 16. My son's going to be 18. I don't, they too old to be whooped. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't never whooped them, though. Did you? I don't know. I don't think I did. Because that's, because once again, you confident. Did you like to get whooped? I just, I think, I didn't, I don't know I ain't like it, but I know I fucking deserved it majority of the time. All right, but, but for me, I really think this era, a lot of us who've been through stuff, we were just like, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. We found our own justice. Our justice now today is taking away the electronics, to be honest. Nah, man, ain't nothing like whooping ass. So, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like whooping ass. And I got two babies. Like, I, I got a three month old daughter, never whooping her. I got to yoke him up sometimes. Look, look at this. That's the difference. Look at this. I, okay, take off the belt, though. <laughs> take off the belt. Nah, I, can't, the, I can't, that's see, what I'm I can't see myself putting the, to, the, the leather to his ass like that. That's but what I'm saying. I'll pop his knuckles or his. Or his I'll give him a pop on the buttock, something like that. That's one thing. I'm talking about a good old. Come here, boy. Take your belt off. Like, how, how? Listen, we ain't we ain't get there yet. <laughs> nah, I'm pretty sure my mom said the same thing about me when I nah. was his age. No, I can't do it. But then when I was 14, I was out here in these streets <laughs> doing that old bullshit. Yeah, I don't, she I don't was think I happy to that. put the foot to the ass. Hey, can you turn it down a bit? Get it's all loud. on the mic. You don't hear it? I don't, actually. Got to turn down Jace's little video game. There you go. All right. Um. So I just wanted to address that real quick, but we can get into our weeks. You want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, all right. So I wanted to shoot your theory in the foot about your presidential campaign. Last week you said it was great. Now you want to listen. Shoot it. It's come on. Man. Well, listen, listen, listen. Because although, okay, so Memorial Day weekend just passed, right? Yeah. We had a three day weekend. Yeah. My nigga, I almost called that work Tuesday. What? That's how fucking. I still wasn't ready to go back to work. I nah. still didn't want to go back to work, first of all. And then second of all, when I got to work and I finished out the week, it felt like I still worked five fucking days. It did not feel like a shortened week at all. I swear to God, I felt like I still worked 40 hours this week. That sounds like a you problem, bro. No, that sounds like a problem that most people could probably relate to. I tweeted that shit, right? I tweeted, had a three-day weekend, still almost ain't 10 minutes to work today. A lot of people gave me the same Sentiment in regards you sound to how they like feeling. You don't want to work. That's the difference. I'm not listening. Who wants to work? Nobody. Listen. So nobody. What you talk about? <laughs> what the fuck? So you're always who gonna wants have a, to work? But you're always going to have a problem with going into work. Then I'm st- at least I'm giving you four days. You you don't got to go in for the five. Fuck them four days, man. I might as well just do the five. That's what it <laughs> oh felt my, like anyway. Last week you said my my campaign. I'm gonna take it when it comes up. You feel me? But at the end of the day, I kind of think it throws you off more because you. You kind of off you kind of off your natural regimen. You no. know what I'm saying? Your routine is off. The next time you get a three day weekend or four day weekend, enjoy your life. That's if you don't do anything with it. That's well, what I, I I did enjoy it, but I enjoyed so you're it. Saying I, enjoy, I got I even I even got drunk on Memorial Day. So you saying that my way of doing things will have you enjoy life so much that you wouldn't want to work at all? That's not what I'm saying at I think all. That's what you said. not what I'm. I, I, I think. I think. I think that's what you said. I, I'm a pretty blunt smoking person. If I would have said that shit, I would have said that <laughs> shit. But I ain't say that shit. What I'm saying is, feel me. Just give me my five regularly and give me my full pay. Okay, that's it. But anyway, other than that, the week was long as shit. Probably also because I got vacation jitters going out of town on Wednesday. So each day leading up to it, as it gets closer, it's just like, yo, fuck this. That's what it is. You ready to go. It's like, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to do this. You feel me? I got to work tomorrow and Tuesday before I leave Wednesday. And I'm like, nigga, nigga, I'm about to be rude to niggas on the phone. Listen, listen, lady, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. I don't need this shit from you. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this shit from you, man. Let me alone calling here, trying to do business and shit. What you think this is? Man, but yeah, so that's where I'm at with it. But, um, Yesterday, um, the family had a special event. Youngest brother got married yesterday. Shout out to Young Peas. Young man jumped the broom. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to his beautiful bride, Kim. Welcome to the family. You stuck with us now. You feel me? For life. For homes. life, I say. You goes nowhere. <laughs> and me. But um, it was it was dope um, to see that happen. And then also surprised us with a gender reveal because... She's two months pregnant with a new baby girl, as we just discovered yesterday. So, shout out to them, man, for that. When it was crazy, when they was like, stand on which side you think is what. I stayed on the girl side. It's girl energy these days, man. I knew it was a girl. It's the it's everybody I know is having girls. What does that mean? It's girl energy. These it's days. feminine energy. Where? Where? We're all over. <laughs> if you listen to Mama Yoga's podcast, you'd understand. It, but isn't she, it always she, everywhere? No, no. I think that. 
with the Me Too movement, with a lot of stuff happening with women, like women are definitely taking the charge now. So it's just like we're definitely in a time where women kind of like have their foot to the uh, pedal to the metal right now. I feel like that's always been a sense. No. I feel like women always take charge. Well, what women are saying was they weren't speaking up. Now that they are, so it's it's a lot like that. So now that they're women dictating. are speaking up, the next generation of births is destined to be girls. No, but at, around this time, not generation. Generation is a long time, but at, around this time right now, a lot of women are being born in this era. This is the perfect. This is the great era to have them born in. Um, like they they get born in the you know what I mean women ain't taking no shit era. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> You make me laugh, bro. <laughs> Yo, fam. Sometimes, sometimes I get what you're saying. Sometimes things are simple, and for me, I dig deep, and it might just be just. I'm one of them people. who's like, okay, so what's going on? And I want to know. You might look at something and be like, well, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I look at shit very simple in a simple sense, um, because when you go deeper than that, sometimes it is like, is it's just. You never know, you know what I'm saying, when you go deeper in the surface. So sometimes you could tell, but sometimes you can't. I just look at it on the surface. So but when you might right. be right. Maybe there's feminine saying. energy affecting the air and making everybody spit out women or, or, or little girls on their pregnancies. I don't know. I can't speak to that. I just want another boy. So you keep that feminine energy right where it is. Oh, you better take your time because girls. Block it, block it, block it. You better take your time. <laughs> I'm taking my time. And guess what? These two might not have nothing to do with each other. But when you're right, you got to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? The dice, snake eyes. Got How it. do you know you're right, though? What do you mean? Because they said, if you think it's a girl, stay on this side. I said, it's a girl because of the energy. And guess what? It was a girl. Now, what I'm saying is they might have nothing to do with each other. But I was right with my assumption. <laughs> so if you ask me again, I'm going to go with the same thing. Yo, right. what do you think I'm having? Oh, you having a girl. And if I y'all know anybody having babies, please tweet us at the Podcast Brothers and let us know the gender, because I want to test this theory of feminine energy. Now, some women be like, well, I see the way the baby, not women, but some people can tell, well, I see the way the baby's sitting. It's a boy. In the, comparison to a previous birth, yeah, but if that's their first birth, then there's nothing to compare it to. I don't know, but I'm saying people can, some people can tell, like last, like yesterday, a lot of women walked up to them was like, I knew it, I knew it. I didn't know, like... Some people got that thing. I mean, as a man, I can't look at a woman and go, "Is she pregnant or not?" Right, I'm not going to do that because you just like you gain weight to me, so I'm not going to come out. Yeah, my you mouth don't want to be, be like, disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you pregnant? <laughs> no. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> hey, have a good day. <laughs> that shit happened. That shit happened to me one time, man. I'll never forget. Ever since then, I just don't comment on random woman's weight. Bumped into an old college friend, ain't seen her in mad years. I was like, oh, shit, how far along are you? She's like, I'm not pregnant. I was like, damn, it's a beautiful day. I can't believe the weather we're having. Can you? <laughs> well, I wasn't yeah, talking to you. I made a fool of my damn self, man. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that was my week. And um, just prepping um, to uh, go out of town, man. Got vacation jitters. And I'm thinking about, hey, 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 kid. Don't you see something taking place over here? What you doing? What you mean, though? No? You said no. I don't see nothing. You said, but that was your week. But that was my week, man. And my we week? I'm trying to go see Atlanta tonight, maybe. Oh, I forgot about Atlanta. I need to go see that. But besides um, having a productive week, working and you know being a father, the only thing that happened with me that stood out was the wedding. Um, congratulations to Donovan, Mister and, and Mrs. McLeese, Mister and Mrs. McLeese, McLeese. Um, and the gender reveal. They got a baby girl on the way, so. Um and look at the family, you know what I mean? Dean baby girl, I got a baby girl. Um Donovan and uh Kim have a baby girl coming. So the women about to recreate like you know what? Off that. Nobody's listening to me. I know what I'm talking about though. But another thing that um happened with me this week was I actually watched this Netflix series called called When They See Us. Did you see it? I don't want to watch it. Okay, cool. So I can talk about it. The thing with that was, I saw the preview of it a few weeks ago, and I'm just like, man, like, listen, man, I don't know if I really want to watch this. I'm tired of seeing the same narrative. Like, let's see some good, positive stuff that black people go through. You don't want to keep seeing the negative stuff. But me, I check Netflix every Friday to see what comes out. And if it's in 4K HD, I'm weird like that. I I love HDR 4K content. So I'm like, okay, I like clear content that's why i bought this samsung tv so i said let me put let me put it on i swear to god that's why i put it on if it was in hd i wouldn't have watched it Mm -hmm. i'm weird like that so i put it on fam and let me tell you something the first 
I got up to the first 30 minutes and turned it off. Couldn't do it. Could not do it. And I learned that it was based off a true story, Central Park 5, a situation that happened in 1989 where five young kids were accused of raping a white female jogger, a 14-year-old Raymond Santana, 15-year-old Kevin Richardson, 15-year-old Antron McCray, 15-year-old Yusef uh, Solomon, I think that's his name, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, and 16-year-old Corey Wise. Um, it, it got to me when they was in like the integrity, uh, in, in, uh, I can't even say the word, but they was in the room with the police. Interrogation They was room? being interrogated. Yeah, my, my tongue be mm-hmm. paused. <laughs> but, they was, but they was in the room, man, and just the way that those cops was just talking to them. And as a parent, you got to sit there and watch. It's nothing worse than your minor child being disrespected by a grown man. You can't do nothing because they're going to whip your ass and throw you away. They're going to have to whip my ass and throw me away. Yeah, I would gladly say you got a choice to reason. make. You, you definitely got a choice to make. Yeah, I can't. But sit, we also talk. Can't sit idle in that situation. We also talking about New York in 1989. So, like the way that this actually happened, like there was just nothing for. Oh yeah, and the both fathers, the Afri- the uh, the black father and the Spanish father, both were afraid of losing their jobs. So they were trying to think about. Listen, let's just get out of here, and let's keep our jobs. So they wasn't thinking straight, but it was. Um, terrifying to watch. So I turned it off. I said, I can't watch this. My son, just I just saw my son. He right. said, Dad, I'm about to walk the readers. You see what I'm saying? So right. now I got my son walking the streets, have just enjoying his 17 year old life, and now and I got to think about happen. anything can right. happen. I have that I have that paranoia in me all the fucking time. Yeah, I can't I can't watch stuff like that no more, man. I just I get it now. I don't need nothing else to show me how racist America is. I absolutely get it. I don't need you tugging on my emotions and have me feeling like I want to go beat somebody's ass after I watch this shit. I can't. I don't watch that shit no more. You definitely, you definitely have to watch something else. Excuse me, after it to um um get that bad taste out your mouth. Right, but um, you like gotta I watch s- something with black people and, and white people doing something happy together. Like <laughs> white man can't watch jump the or Django shit. or something. Like, <laughs> right, <laughs> you gotta watch white the Django. man can't jump a Django <laughs> or some shit. Man, put my heart at ease. Now, the one that got it the worst though was sixteen year old Corey Wise because he was sixteen. He did about thirteen years. He even went to Rikers Island, and every time he notorious he, Rikers Island. Every and, and when his parole hearing came up, they were just like, you know, are you ready to admit? This crime And he just was like No And it got to a point He was like Yo tell him I'm not going to the hearing I'm maxing out So Lucky for these young men The person who actually Committed the crime Confessed to it I don't know why he did But he just randomly Was just like Yo I did it His DNA matched everything And um Most of them were already Out of prison already The only one that was Actually still in When this guy Admitted to the crime Was Corey Mm-hmm. And they got a $40 million settlement I don't think that matters Because you can't get that time back And we talking about a 14 year old going to jail Got his, college, nah, got, got his high school bullshit, diploma at 28 this, like, this motherfucker's like They go to jail at 15 and do 13 years Like you missed everything That yeah. you would have You were supposed to learn within that time yeah. Like that 40 million not making that up yo. Like you missed significant amount of time To your development as a person And characteristics and lessons That you may have Should have been learning you know what I'm saying? Out in life. Now, 13 years later, as a grown man, almost 30, you have to go through and learn stuff that you should have learned at 17 and 18 and the years after. Like, that's fucked up. I definitely hated Whitey for, for a bit. Like, yo, like, Omar, like, because they just was like, yo, we got some five black kids in the park. Like, just book them. Like, they, they, they forced them to confess the crimes that, that they didn't do. There was no DNA. There was nothing. But it was just like, well, they got video of them committing, video of them admitting to the crime only because. Only because they were pressured into doing so by the fucking har- harassing, over right. aggressive ass detective. 15 hours on, 15 hours being held, no food, no nothing. Of course you're going to be like, all right, bro, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Hell no. Fuck that. As grown men, no, we're going to hold on. Yeah, that's but a as a 14 year old? Yeah, as a, we got to, I mean, I think that's unfortunately. Possibly prepare kids for situations like that. I'm not. Don't admit the shit that you ain't do for, to nobody. Absolutely. That's just like I I I I, I probably got my brothers a couple of ass whoopings growing up because I ain't drink the last of the juice. All right. <laughs> and if I get asked who drank it, I'm not gonna say it was me. Just mm-hmm. say one of these niggas asked. No, you was thirsty, motherfucker. So you get your ass whooped 
for being thirsty and drinking the last of this shit when you wasn't supposed to. Yeah, I'm not doing it either. I'm right. not doing. I'm not doing it. You love your siblings. Who drank the juice? It wasn't was me. It me? Like, it wasn't me. I'm not taking the ass whooping. <laughs> we nope. talked about this like 15 minutes ago when the ass whoopers was popular. No, I'm not taking no. the ass whooping because you was thirsty. Right. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put myself in that light for you. And after you get your ass whooped, I'll see if you want to play later on. Right. Yeah. Hey. Well, <laughs> but you can't you can't go. Listen, bro, you can't be mad at me because you got your ass whooped for something that you did. Who drank the last you know of the saying? juice? That was that thing, too, because mom would go to Hello Farm, and she rack up on, like, 10 juices. Them ten things juices, were going, like, two days. Multiple flavors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> niggas, don't even, niggas don't get cups. We taking that shit straight out the carton. <laughs> Yo. Put the refrigerator door open. I got a confession to make, man. I got a confession to make. I don't know if somebody else got the ass whooped for this, but I... Oh, man. We was living with Aunt Stephanie one time, man. You remember Mr. Larry? Yeah and no Name sounds familiar But I can't Mr. say Mr. Larry that. right He came home one day <laughs> He made a beeline Straight for the fridge Cause he wanted that Pepsi <laughs> And I left a swig <laughs> <laughs> I left a swig Joke's on you Larry <laughs> Hey I mean he didn't even take his trench coat off man. Like yo when he I get in the house trench coat. I want some Pepsi <laughs> What year was this? <laughs> well <laughs> Um, 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 rest in peace to Mr. Larry. I think he passed though. Rest in peace to Mr. But, um, Larry, man. But you played. He came in the crib. He ain't put down bro. the briefcase or nothing. He went straight to the fridge. Which one of you motherfuckers? Eyes? <laughs> Wasn't me, Mr. Know. Larry. Man, it was eleven kids in a two bedroom Facts. house. My nigga, you, <laughs> you were, talking about Aunt Stephanie was, crib on East State? You was never getting an answer to that Facts. question. <laughs> Aunt Stephanie kids and our, uh, uh, our, we always stayed together. Man. Just go downstairs to the store and get you another one, my nigga. Because you're not going to get the truth. Not but, this motherfucker. Buy you a mini fridge and keep your Pepsi. In your room next time, fam. I was thirsty. Oh shit! But um, I made the post, and I was just like, "Yo, it's too much going on with this show. I can't finish it." And everybody that I knew was like, "Yo, I can't finish it. I can't watch it. I can't do it." As parents, we was all pissed off, just knowing that this could happen to one of our kids today in 2019. Yeah, today it can happen. And either, like you said, either you going shoot the fair one with some cops. Because you can't watch it or you got to sit there and you got to take it. Yeah. Fuck them shows. Shout man. out to them brothers. Shout out to, I mean, not, I mean, I, sh- I mean. When they going to make a movie or a TV show about a police officer. Oh, spilling the juice. Jesus, kid. About a police about officer. About a police officer who, uh, uh, who filed some incorrect paperwork or lied to get somebody arrested. They did. And they them took, going to jail. They did. They, they, they took it off Netflix. Oh shit! I need more it movies. It's called Seven made Seconds. Like you heard of that? Seven Seconds. Oh that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, was, that was fictional though. I'm but it's based. Real. But it's based on what's really happening. Nah, but no, no, no. Give us the real. You want to give us the victims and that shit and the actual uh, biopic from the victims? Nah, give us the fucking perpetrators and they real story, but they real name. It might have been fictional, face. but that thing was so real. As soon as it debuted, they said they wasn't renewing. That thing did numbers, so you know it. It hit some hearts. Like, wild people in the police department was arrested for being bad cops. And they said, no, y'all, gotta, y'all can't. You got to take this down. But um, if you haven't seen When They See Us, do it. Have some tissue with you. Um, take your time watching it. Or you don't have to because you know the drill. Or you can just read Central Park 5. Google it. You don't got to watch the uh, Netflix special. You might read it. Read it, yeah. Don't want to watch read it. up on it and just do the knowledge. I think it's important to know. Yeah, right, right. So right, yeah, right. so reading up one it won't be a uh, too much of a reach for me, but I'm not about to watch that shit, man. Whoa, 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 Fucking pigs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bullshit. All of them. Bullshit. Yeah. Oscar winner Monique has recently said we must allow our black kings to have side chicks. Now Monique is a comedian. So I don't know if we could take what she's saying serious. But what I the topic that I want to talk about is open relationships. How to get them, why you might need them, are we even afraid to ask? Are they necessary in 2019? I don't know if and this isn't this isn't for everybody. But not everybody wants to be with just one person for the rest of their life, especially not especially just because go for anybody. If you have been dealing with this person since your high school, since your days of high school, since your teenage years, your high school sweetheart, Mm -hmm. it's hard 
Because we weren't prepared for social media, where everything, all of your temptation is at a thumbs click. Right. Shout out to the people that strong in willpower who don't jump in them DMs when you have an argument with your partner. Mm-hmm. Shout out to those people that don't that don't do DMs. Period, because they're faithful. We get that, but there are a collective few who step out on their relationship because they aren't happy at home, but the bills got to be paid. It has to look good. It has to remain a certain way. People can't know. People can't know. So the image cannot out. be distorted. Feel me? So people like to step out. So that brings me to the question for those of you who, who are having a hard time holding on to that one relationship. What's the issue of asking for an open relationship? Now, me, I've kind of been turned all for it. Don't know if I want it or not. Don't know. You but got offered that shit? No, I didn't get offered it. Oh, but right. every time an extra person was um, brought up, the women that I was, was talking to was always on some selfish type of vibe or mm-hmm. only me type of vibe. Like a lot of women will say, I don't mind a threesome or things of that nature. It's just they fear that the girl might swing back, double back and deal with you on a level and she's not there. So they are hesitant to let somebody in because they don't want to be betrayed at the end. Mm-hmm. Or you might say, or, and men do this a lot, where you wait till the situ- till the relationship is bad and you go, I think we want to might have to consider an open relationship. See, that's bad because you're bringing it up during, during the bad, the during the bad times. Yeah. So now she goes, well, you know, her, her reaction can be whatever because you didn't present. It's not the right time. It's the presentation was terrible. It wasn't the right time. definitely not the right time. But yeah. my question, because I ha- actually have... I took down seven notes as to how you can actually go about asking your partner for open relationship. I feel like it shouldn't be so much as a as an ask, like, hey, we should be in an open relationship. Um, and if it is, it has to be like in the early stages of y'all learning each other and dating or whatever. You can't be doing the same thing. I, th- I think it's harder to accept when the relationship has been like the standard relationship for a couple of years or whatever. Mm. And then you present it, and then it's like, well, why do you want to do that now? Mm-hmm. But if you kind of have those conversations, and um, as y'all get to know each other and kind of hinting at it or bringing it up and actually your partner's thoughts on it and stuff like that, it might be more of an open dialogue and not like out the blue or unexpected because you kind of like groomed her into your thoughts as to what you're already thinking. She can still shut that ass down and say no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like gradually conversing about it as opposed to bringing it about the blue after years of dating with no thought to it. It's, it's more of a red flag that way as opposed to casually bringing it up, just discussing it, just to pick your partner's brain in regards to it. And a lot of times you got you have to have a reply for what your partner says um, when it comes to you asking for an open relationship, no matter what, um, no matter how long y'all been in it or whatever the case may be, because they're going to fire at you with a negative scenario. You got to know how to counter that. But I do agree, especially if you... Basically, you got to be smooth, my nigga. <laughs> yeah. You got to be real smooth, and you got to be able to answer her questions in depth and detail. You know what I'm saying? To make her feel like this is something that she can do and you not flake on her. So I got seven ways to ask your partner for an open relationship. Try these. <gasps> Try these. Get back with me, Dr. Knockboot. <laughs> and um, let me know if any of these work. Number one, I want to hear this shit. Don't be pushy. Yeah. What that is saying is, like you said, be smooth. Make it, let it flow. Conversation is mention it one time and don't mention mention it it again. Don't mention it tomorrow or the day after. Bring it up. Have a conversation about it. She know how you feel after you bring it up the one time. You know what I'm saying? And then if you feel as though after a certain amount of time passed and you didn't discuss it again or. There's been no type of initiative taken or it hasn't been brought up. Hey, hey just drop the bug in there. Hey, you know, we never finished talking about that thing we talked about, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to be a pest ass nigga, you're going to bring that shit up every day, you might as well forget about it, good? And silence speaks volumes. So if you do bring it up and she don't, she or he don't say nothing, because it's going to go either way, then understand that silence speaks volumes. So, you know, be smooth about it and don't be a pest. But just like Fresco said, you can bring it up. 
maybe a week, maybe a month later. For me, I don't think I don't don't bring it up at all to me again. To me, for me, because it's like you know, it's like keep control of the situation. If you the know, ball is you in, know. the ball is in his or her court now. Keep control of the situation. They heard you. They know what you want. And they're thinking about it. And trust me, they're talking to their friends about it. Now, what friend that they talk about to could dictate whether it pop off or not. But if your friend has had success in an open relationship or success in a poly relationship, they can school you on the benefits of it. Possibly. It's but- never going to be... Us sitting down. So, what do you think of open relationship? Sure, they're always going to talk to their friends. Yeah, man, I, I agree. I, I agree for the most part. There are a few rare ones out there that could come to uh, that type of this, uh, a conclusion on their own thoughts and keeping their friends in the dark about what goes down in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Those are the kind of women I prefer, genuinely. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm be talking to them about them talking to them about nothing. If you can't come to a conscious decision by yourself, then damn it, fuck it. <laughs> Because I don't need you talking about something. Well, I wouldn't have did this if you and Rhonda wouldn't have told me it was okay. Like, nah, fuck that. No, you decided it was okay. So you blame yourself for whatever happened if it didn't go right. Number two, and I like this one. Explain what they'll get out of it. Mm. Even though it's your idea, explain the benefits for your partner. You know? Now, so what, so they're going to be like, listen, baby. We get to an open relationship. Look. You can get side dick too, <laughs> but women. Is that, is that is that the proposal? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what? Nigga, do you like me? Or do you care about me? Or what? And that's the slippery, <laughs> and that is the part that you really have to uh, figure out because, like we said, you got to be smooth because women are going to come back at you with some crazy stuff that you're not ready for. Oh, so you just so I can just go fuck such and such, and you don't care. You got to be ready for that. Though. See, nah, see, I ain't saying you can fuck with me. What I'm saying is, if y'all go out and whatever, y'all have a little fun, cool. I, I understand that. Just if, if it goes past that, I don't need to know nothing. Just keep it at you. Wouldn't want to know night. though. I th- I don't know. I was, but you're still. In I kind of stepped outside myself and was talking to somebody else. I wasn't presenting that information. To okay, Fresco. okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> but me, oh no, 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 fuck no. But you're okay. You're proposing an open relationship, so more than likely you're going to have one. So she can go fuck whoever because you fucking. So it's no, not like now. No, if no, you're no, sitting no. Home, I, what I'm saying is, I'm not talking as me. I'm talking as a nigga who might be in this. I'm. You said I'm not talking as me in the situation. I don't want the situation. I don't speaking, want a relationship. No, no, no. Okay. I'm speaking from a person who's in that scenario, not as something as not the situation as I would carry it. No, I'm good. You can't fuck nobody. No so shit out you. Number three. <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask you why you don't want a relationship after I get through these seven. But number three, let them know it's not them. It could just be a fetish, a fantasy of mine. Sorry, yeah, good sorry. Luck, good luck with that one, my nigga. <laughs> Honestly, though, sorry I didn't tell you when we first started dating, but this isn't about you. Your box isn't trash. See, we gotta, we gotta have that conversation. <laughs> we gotta have that conversation. Is that, is that what you tell her in that moment? Listen, baby, your box not garbage. Nah, I just want another. But one. you know, that's what they thinking though. <laughs> your box not garbage, baby. I just want another box. You know, that's not what they. But you know that's what they're thinking about. <laughs> you know that's what they're thinking about. Is something wrong with me? No, you're perfectly fine. This is me. I want something. And I might I don't think- know, man, because I wouldn't be cool with that presentation on the opposite end. If I'm being approached about why she would want to be in an open relationship, she goes, listen, you dick not trash. I just want another one. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> You know what, bitch? You fired today. Effective <laughs> immediately. But Yo, shit. But that's reality, though. You can want somebody else. And, yeah, still, and, and, you, and you still fired. And it's the reality that I don't have to accept that either. That you can want somebody else. Yeah, cool. That's a reality. But it's also a reality that I don't have to accept you wanting that or wanting me to be involved in that. So, again, how is this benefiting me? That's up for her to explain. <laughs> right. That, that, that is number two of the... On the, list. the checklist. So yeah. when How you actually, me? when you ask, when you suggest this type of relationship, you gotta be ready for the questions that are coming. So basically, you have you gotta have your dissertation planned out prior to the conversation. You gotta have run right. down. You know what I'm saying? The why you just can't say it and then not have anything to back up that initial. And thought. I think and I think that's a lot of the issue. You'd be like, well, I want an open relationship or a threesome, and you'd be like, uh, because think about it. I'm going off the fact where. A man randomly asks his girl for a threesome. And, you know, women are slick these days. So what they say. So 
okay, we can have a threesome with a girl. Can we have one with a guy? Men don't have no. come, but men don't really have educational comebacks. We just say no, fuck no. Okay, the threesome's over. That is an educational comeback. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Number about as textbook as it gets. <laughs> Number four. Reassure their fears. Now that could go with um, a lot of let them know what they'll get out of it, and you know, basically, any time that. Let me tell you the story. And I don't know if I told this story on uh, uh, the podcast, but I was I was left speechless when this was told to me, and this is dead ass a true story. I don't think she listens to the podcast, so I can say it, but I ain't gonna say, say her name. name. I ain't gonna say her name. Say that bitch name. I met this girl, right? Knew her since middle school. Oh, I know Kick you talk it. about. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, since middle school. And I like for my friends to talk to me. Talk that nasty stuff. Like, what you went to? So she told me that one time she planned on going to Philly with her and her girl to have a threesome with this dude. But he was he was unavailable. Something happened to where it didn't go down. So me, I'm like, okay, well, it's good. Mm-hmm. She Assert said, yourself as you should. She yep. said, nah, I wouldn't do it with you. Because... I don't want my girl, and I said this about 10 minutes ago, I don't want my girl to double back and want to smash you. And I was just left speechless. I just was like, okay. So what makes you think that she wasn't going to double back and smash the nigga in Philly? But this, so is, but, in Philly? but this is what I got from it. Number one, a lot of people like doing freak stuff out of town. And even though Philly is on the outskirts, it's, it's right there. Shit, we can go to Philly. No, no, <laughs> but I'm saying he's from Philly. Yeah. So he, he's not from the town. He's like, it, it, it's not going to get back that this happened. Number two, she was feeling me, wasn't feeling him. Once okay. they like you, they want you to themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they felt for him. They might have just liked his swag, his appearance. All right, I'm going to give you some of the double pussy. Mm-hmm. Yep, it happens. Right. Shout out to that man. Right. They don't like you. They just like the way you carry yourself. Okay, mm-hmm. you can get this. Now, they look at me and they be like, oh, you husband material. I'm not sharing. So when she told me the story, I'm like, okay. Which one is better? You Bird rather man. be you rather be the slice on the side that gets the double slice of pie or the one that you know what I'm saying? I I fight with that. Cause sometimes I hate to be looked at as so good because I miss out on the bad fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. I miss right. out on the no, bad that's stuff. Of facts. When yeah. women see me, they just automatically think, okay, we about to go out to eat. He about to treat me right. No, I ain't. It's like, yo, mattress. I'm not shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> treat me like I don't wanna I wanna be ain't shit nigga for once. Like, let me do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, like that's that's my oh, life story. Man. It's just like, oh, oh. I'm probably on too many people ain't shit list. But hey, but guess really. what though? Oh, yeah, I don't give a shit. But hey, <laughs> I bet you got a lot of stories to tell. Listen, oh, I got tattoos. Shorty ran down on me because I got tattoos and I ball. She wanted to smash me. Uh, I got too many stories. Too man. many stories. Why? Because they knew you ain't. Well, you ain't an ain't shit nigga. But you got that bad boy vibe to you, so everybody wants a piece. I got the other vibe. It's just like, yo, you, 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 husband material. So I'm a, but you be like, yo, I know your whole life. Like, why you want to be a whole last week, right. but then want to be white milk, whole white milk <laughs> right. with First me? First of all, bitch, I'm lactose, so <laughs> yeah. that shit don't not work. <laughs> so, so basically, number four, a reassure their fears. Like her reply to me was, she didn't want her girlfriend to basically double back and smash me. So you just gotta have that ready to be like, listen. We good. I, I would never do that. Like you're the one introducing me to this lifestyle. I'm not going to turn my back on you. You know what I'm saying? Like me and you. That's like, hard to sell, man. That's okay. The, listen, I think at that point, I think there has to be a certain type of there has to be a certain type of trust or or love or whatever it is that is, is established at that point. There's no way that that's that part of it. You're not going to be able to reassure her of her fears. If y'all just start dating or whatever, y'all early in the dating game and you coming at it like this. You, unless you just that nigga, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm This one I am speaking from my perspective. I don't think that I'm that good. Oh, yeah. I'm coming at her like, listen, me and you can be partners in this. I'm going to get more success because you need the woman. You feel me? You need the woman because her energy, they go that feminine energy again. Her energy is going to draw the women in. So you need her, like, okay, so me and your girl gonna start smashing. No, I'm more interested in the threesomes. I don't want right. a one on one with your friend. Right. If that's, that's the what, case, I just fuck you. Right. The right. hell with the friends. So that's you know what, what I mean about reassuring them. It's like, yo, fam, I don't care who your girl is. I'm not gonna double back with them. Me and you are a team. Like me and you about to go fuck shit up. Yo, listen, it's, it's, it's me and you in this. It's I'm me. And I'm you. tag teaming her with you. Yeah. you me? If you ain't dead, then fuck it. It's just if she ain't dead, fuck it. It's just me and you. Number five. And this is very important. 
when it comes to open relationships and having the conversation. Set ground rules. Got to be respectful. Whatever the what number gra- is this? Number five. Five. All right. You got to be respectful. No disrespect. Um, no in house. No in cars. Like you know, what I mean, just be respectful. Right. No in house. If, if it's a situation where the rules is established that I have to be present at the time it goes down. And don't don't like you were saying earlier. Don't double back. You know what I'm saying? Because not only you you cutting yourself short. Nah, dude, you should have just ran off with a random and had her on the side if you was going to play it like that. But don't introduce the situation to be what it is. Oh wait, we talk about threesomes or open relationships? Open still? relationships, threesomes. Oh, I got a little, just bring just, just bring people mixed in. Up. Bringing people into the relationship was kind of like the same, but it's different. Right. Either way, you you fucking somebody else. I might as well just jump in that poly shit, man. You feel me? And just let it be that. But that's another thing. Um, what was I? Well, goddamn, I was about to say. You said poly. I was about to think of something. I'm about to say something else, but not actually thinking of something else. Oh yeah. So what do you think of this though? Have rules like one body per week, and if I don't get a body that week, you gotta wait till I get my body. Because you know how you gonna feel knowing your partner smashing every week, and you ain't got nobody because nobody believes you're in an open relationship. Because you gotta think I'm about in an open relationship. Man, get the fuck out of here! You lying? You jump in her inbox <laughs> now. You live with your girl, and she like, yo, don't you got a girl? We in an open relationship. Get the fuck out! It worked for my man on Insecure. Shit. Yeah, but she was kind of um, <laughs> she was kind of like worked vulnerable. For him. I mean, if you find somebody who's vulnerable, yeah, but... That's probably the only time it's going to happen. Yeah, men <laughs> men aren't going to ask questions. Like, if my girl, if my girl was to, if we was to be like, yo, we in an open relationship, and if she was cool with it, son, there would be no questions asked. The men wouldn't ask. This is why niggas be plotting on joints who be in relationships. Like, yo, as soon as you break it with your man, it's on. Because that nigga knows she's vulnerable at that moment. Yo. Soon as it's over, I'm having an inbox. Soon as the nigga see those deleted pictures off Instagram, oh, she not with old boy no more. What? I don't do that. Be honest with you. Hop, I, skip, and the jump. It. I hate it because you hate what taking taking advantage of vulnerable women because it's good at first, but then I'm I'm always thinking about the end. Like, yo, fam, she's really not in her right frame of mind, and she really needs somebody to actually hold on to for a long time because you become her therapy. You, mm-hmm. you there, you holding this. So I'm thinking about everything. I've never really been the type of dude like, I'm just about to just go knock yeah, you down real she'll quick. She'll come to her senses when she realizes you ain't shit and that she deserve better. She'll leave your ass. We'll, 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 it ain't going to be long, neither. That's a topic that we <laughs> definitely going to have. It's a topic we definitely going to have. You know what? You came through when I was hurting that time. In about 10 minutes, we're going to talk about you that topic. Sh- you ain't shit. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, set ground rules. Whatever those rules are, those rules are yours. Number six, talk about the STI uh, preventions mm-hmm. definitely talk about you know the sexually transmitted um, um, diseases and things of that nature. Where, that should be a where rubbers that should be about like number three. It's not an order. It's that, just that one should be higher. Well, that should have been number one, huh? Yeah, that should be higher. Basically, so make so, so make sure protection is being used. And with that alone, I probably wouldn't do it because I hate rubbers. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I'm not using. No, rubbers. who does? Who the I fuck am, does? I'm not using. Come on, rubbers, man. man. Come on, seriously. We grown as fuck. Who the fuck out there gonna be like? You know what? I'd rather do it with the rubber than without. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kicking. It I'm depends. You out. It depends on how bad I want you, though. Like, if, if I mean, it can go down it, with it. It you will. Know what I'm but I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna enjoy it, and then I might not want to do open relationships. Like, it's trash, man. I don't want to. I don't want to bust nothing down with a rubber. Like, I want to. And listen, bust down Tatiana. I'm all for protecting yourself, especially the youth. Like, y'all just getting into the game. I'm 36, fam. I'm not you like listen man, once you go swimming. I'm not 36 yet. Once you go swimming without a vest on, you feel me? It's hard to get back in the waters with a vest on. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I know how to swim. Yeah. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But um protect yourselves at all times. I'm just speaking for me. I'm not doing the rubbers. You understand? Number six. Well, number seven, my fault. Talk to friends who've been there. Now we discussed that. If you have a friend who's in a poly relationship, who has been who have been in an open relationship, or has been in a threesome, have a conversation with them, and maybe they can explain to you that it's not that bad. If it's just you two sitting there in front of a fire with baked cookies and warm milk, you might get a no. But tell her or tell him, and then go talk to your homies and see what they say. Hopefully, it's only like that with this situation. I like people who can come to conscious decisions on their own. I understand that some decisions do require some type of consultation with someone of a 
a trusting trusting nature of relationship. It might be able to um, make you feel at like ease with what you want to go for or with. That's cool. But um, again, I feel like a lot of times people backtrack on that when it when when the ugly part of this when when the ugly part of the scenario comes up, then it's. I know I should have listened to you and, and Rhonda. Yeah. You yeah. motherfucking shouldn't have. I should have never listened to y'all. Well, wait, wait, but you still grown. You mm-hmm. blaming me and Rhonda, but you still decided to do it. So as long as we can, you know what I'm saying, be adults and understand that we came to this uh, decision consciously on mm-hmm. our own terms, I'll be pointing the finger. Because, yeah, although I presented it to you, I knew perfectly well what I was getting into. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you thought by, based on how it was explained or something like that. But, you know. Just gotta be aware. Just be more aware. If you constantly get involved, then you know what I'm saying you gotta handle what comes with it. I can't promise you that you'll have an open relationship if you follow these seven steps, but probably not. If you <laughs> probably not. If you take your time and study what we talked about, your batting percentage will go higher. We're in the age where we have we can be at we we can reach out and touch anybody we want. You can have the happiest relationship, the happiest marriage. Things go bad for a week because things do. And the next thing you know it, you see somebody on the gram and they just, you just start smiling. You ain't smiled in a week. You can get fucked up out here and not even know it, fam. So it's just like, if you're not built for the one-on-one for years, it's okay to have the conversation. If your partner can't handle that conversation, then you might need to reevaluate because you're supposed to be able to talk about anything. Right. I'm not talking about beating the shit out of you. I'm just talking about, hey, listen, I might be interested in some... A little, a little extra fun. Yeah. A little extracurricular activity. And whoever that, you know, whoever receives that question, be strong enough to answer any way you choose and don't linger by... And don't let it linger by saying, if I say no... He or she's going to do it anyway. Stick with your guns. If right. no is no, no is no. I said no. Shout out to I said no podcast. I said no. And if your partner disrespects your wishes, then you got to handle that. But don't be afraid of answering it, answering the question the way you think you should answer. Don't answer right. it to please somebody else. Do you think an open relationship is okay? Do you think a threesome is okay? If so, do it. Do it. If not... Don't fucking do it. Now, before we move on to the next topic, you said that you're not open. You're not for open relationships. Is there a specific reason? Um, Honestly, more than one woman is a headache, man, for me. I'm good. Mm, okay. I'm good. I exhaust all my energy in the one spot. I can't. I'm not good at juggling. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a part of a circus. I'm not mm. good at it. Okay. All right, I'll take you out. You know it is what it is. Whoa, 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 and I hate on the niggas that can do it. <laughs> but shout out to y'all What matters more What others think of you Or what you think of yourself Might sound like a simple question that, uh, To answer right But before we get into What you think I want to read what I Read on Instagram From a guy that I think highly of Like if he says The sky is blue The sky the sky is orange. I believe him. He's very, very powerful brother. He's very motivational for me. Oh, he must be something. He says, and but this is a quote. A wise man once said, he who defines himself doesn't really know who he is. Lao Tzu, I believe that's what the person who said the quote was. So he goes on to write his own um, caption under that. He says, when I do interviews, people often ask me, who is Mike Rashid? That's his name. He, he, he's a bodybuilder. His name is Mike Rashid. Very Shout out to Mike positive Rashid. dude. And he says, fuck how I define myself. What matters to you is how you see me. What matters to, what matters to you is how you see me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Some people don't care what others think of them, but I care. I like to think of people that I deal with and interact with as being dope people. So I'd like to leave a positive impression on them. Now, the fucked up people, I don't give a shit about what they think. People I care about, I care how they view me. Tomorrow isn't promised. I can die at any moment. So I like for people who recent had interactions with me be pleasant. Does it really matter? Maybe not. But I can't help to really care about people's feelings. So with that being said, do you get what he's trying to say? I made 
a not a poll, but I made a post on uh, Facebook, and a lot of people were just like, "That's a no brainer." I care about what I care about. I don't care what people think of me. Um, I definitely understand what he's saying. In regards to the, in regards to people who don't matter, absolutely not. I don't care what those people think. But the people that matter, yeah, I, I do think I do care about what those people think. Mm. So, um, it's important to know that a lot of decisions that you make, even if it's for yourself or for your own reasons, they affect people around you. And um, if you don't take into consideration how certain moves or choices or decisions could affect those people, then you're ultimately selfish, and you're going to end up with nobody being around you anyway. So then. Only what you think at that point truly will matter. But um, you got to take into consideration what the people closest, close in your life are going to, how, they, how, how your moves are going to affect what, you know what I'm saying, how they feel and what they got going on. But uh, a stranger walking down the motherfucking street? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely, of course, I care about what my kids think of me. What I think of immediate family, what they think of me, you know, when... You've 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 been at a function where somebody might walk in the house and they're like, look at this piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is your family. Right. It's like look at this weak ass thing, man. Like, <laughs> you want to be the one when they when you walk in the door, they like, oh man, it's you. Like some positive energy have just come into the house because you're here. So I definitely want to be that. But at the same time, you also got to understand that. Especially when it comes to men, black men. The narrative of you changes every day. Right. The people that tell you that they love you and the people that tell you that they appreciate what you do can shit on you the next day. So you can't be like, man, on Monday, man, I got tears of joy, man. You just touched my heart. Because on Tuesday, it could all change. And guess what? Right. You can't just pay attention to the positive. So right. you got to go with the negative as well. And that might be an issue. And also, when um, when you're considering, even even when... Making decisions and taking into consideration the people who are around you or that your decisions will ultimately affect, like, even if they aren't with it, sometimes their decision or how they feel can't dictate the move that you make. Sometimes it's like, all right, I understand how you feel, but this is something that I, I really feel like I need to do, so I, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's, you know what I'm saying? Especially, huh? No, I'm good. Especially in the social media era where a Facebook post can be made about you at any second. And it's going to be people who jump on that post who don't know you, never spoke to you, never saw like you, who's going to agree. That's right, girl. Fuck him. Yeah. Then she shot me. What the fuck yeah. are you talking hey, about? Hey, they don't That's, care. But hey, listen. <laughs> you know what they I'm don't even care. She because guess me. But well, why did she shoot you, though? <laughs> Give a fuck. I didn't shoot her. It That's, don't matter. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. There could be a Facebook post, a tweet, anything, a, any type of post made about you tomorrow, and you're going to have to live with that. Ignore it. Who cares what people that you've never met think of you? Yeah, I never came into. Care. I never had any interaction with you. And for the people that I did have interaction with, y'all know the vibes. Right. You know. So at the end of the day, you could be around me, and if somebody bad mouths me, and you just go with them because that's your dog, that's your friend, you phony anyway. You right. listen. I ain't even that type of dude. Right. I'm I'm the type that if you wrong, you wrong. Like you being my if you was wrong or some shit, I'm like, nah, bro, you kinda deserve that shit. Mm-hmm. I can see why a motherfucker would do that to you <laughs> after you did that bullshit. You know, I can see it. Cause I would probably if you weren't my brother, I consider doing the same shit to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's definitely people lying to people in their corners. You got a lot of yes men out here and people got a, a camp full of yes men who just if a person is making moves, then they just like, yeah, girl, fuck it. Who cares what they think anyway? They ain't got nothing on you. Like, nah, that's fucked up. If your friend is doing some bullshit, it's your responsibility as a friend to stop that friend from engaging in that bullshit. Or are you at least not being a part of it and letting them know that they on some shit. You know what I'm saying? But you can't let them just go out and make those decisions thinking that they, they, they're right. Most of the times they're not, and it's coming from a bad place, which is an emotional place. That you really never make good decisions in. Shout out to the friends that be going, like, they'll DM you or they'll hit you on your number be like, yo, fam, take that down. Right. We ain't doing that. Like, let's get together. Let's have some drinks. Let's kick it. Get all your shit out in the crib. But don't yeah. post none of this crazy stuff on social media. I don't, I don't know why people go on there and basically... Uh, uh, tell people their life story Because I'll be honest Nobody cares Nah man It's just the drama aspect to it Your shit will become a joke yeah. In a second And then you gotta learn To laugh at your own jokes Because guess what After Monday Tuesday comes And then there's somebody else That people want to talk about yep. Nobody <laughs> cares yep. But it's entertaining And that's what like a, a, a social site like Facebook is for 
just it's just it's for well for our community for the town. I know that a lot of people use Facebook to uh, basically talk, talk about shit. talk about other people. If you got something positive on Facebook, it's going to get ignored. Yeah. But if you got the scoop, if you got the video, if you got the pictures, if you got the scoop, the yeah, story, or you well, you're going to get about 300 comments on your post. And we all know <laughs> yeah. that's that's basically what yeah, a lot of people go on social media for. That's basically what it, that's what it is. I can't, honestly, if I go to somebody like on all social media, like, like Twitter or Facebook or whatever. If I go on your page and all you're doing is talking negative about other people, I, I, ain't, I don't have no business here. I'm going to let you stay in your own wallow of self-pity, you know what I'm saying, until you come out of that shit. But I'm not going to not gonna go back and forth with entertaining you, being negative. Because most of the time, people that's being negative all the time ain't got shit going on. They just down talking the people that do got shit going on. Or if they ain't got nothing going on, they ain't got nothing going on yet. You be like, yo, you in a relationship? So so your house is perfect. Your household is perfect. You ain't got nothing going on? Right. Like, come on, like, yo. It's situations, man. You just got to be able to re- extend that relatability factor. You might not be going through the exact same thing, but, you know, as an adult, as a full-grown person, you've been through your own set of shit, so you shouldn't be raising your eyebrows at people going through shit that's, like, understandable. Now, there's some wayward shit out there that be happening that I just can't get with. Like, nah, you're on your own on that one, my nigga. I don't know what the fuck you got going on. But for the most part, it's basic, everyday, maintaining relationships and communicating issues and problems that people deal with. So, on that aspect, on that level, like, I feel like everybody at age, I'm, I'll be 33 on Friday. So, at this point, nigga, like, everybody who's in that age bracket, I feel like, boy, can you get off my microphone? Thank you, please. Thank you. I feel like everybody is at that point where you've had those situations so you can extend that relatability to other people and just offer some type of advice, condolences, whatever it is. But from a judgmental standpoint, nah, y'all niggas got to chill. So basically, find a balance. Everything is about balance, man. Find people who you can, find people who you really trying to impress, man. It could be your children, your mother, your father, you, you know, your brothers. Like, I'm the oldest of all my siblings. So yeah, I would like them to think highly of me. One way or another. And you ain't shit. Of course, of course. It's always going to happen. You know, there's, you can't please everybody. But yeah. when they're not hating, they can be like, yo, big bro doing his thing. But if I don't know you, and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, that, that'll that never matter to me, man. Mm-hmm. Like, log off, go on another social site, read a book, come back the next day and, and find out that nobody's even thinking and about you And most of these no motherfuckers, more. man, they'll talk shit. On their little Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and then they see you and they give you a five, man. Mm-hmm. It's mad weird. It's all entertainment. My life, your entertainment. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got one more topic that I wanted to talk about. I think we got a little bit of time. Um, I made this post yesterday. This is actually a real um, question that was asked of me, but I kind of like paraphrased it. Um, so here it is. Picture this. Your 15-year-old daughter has been dating a boy for a few months. She comes to you, the parent, and says she's ready to have sex. How do you respond? Oh, shit. We got a lot of dope answers. Shout out to the Podcast Brothers group. You know, I asked for serious replies only. One of the, one, one of the dopest um, replies I got, you know, open your eyes to was, if your kid comes to you and says they're ready to have sex, they're Got they gonna mind, do it anyway. They got their mind made up that that's what they're gonna do. I got my mind made up. Come on, just forgive it. I'm moving on. So Sorry, it's class acting. Yeah. What you're not gonna do is be on some. Oh no, the hell you ain't. Go to your room. You're on punishment. Mm-hmm. No sex for you. That might not be the best method. Congratulations, your daughter's gonna fuck now. <laughs> and so where, is. and where did she get that from? P- possibly from the boy who she's dating. Possibly from. Another a female. It could be a female friend who's already sexually active. Mm-hmm. It could be from a group of friends. It could be from these sexually charged TV shows that be what that be on Netflix. My daughter on told Instagram pages. Instagram. My daughter told me to watch the block on my block, and it's about some teenage kids in high school. But it's also about love and having crushes and basically, you know, you you see stuff on TV that you think they'll be like, "Yo, it's PG thirteen or something." Like, mm-hmm. okay, well. I thought PG-13 meant this, but PG-13 has changed. But anyway, mm. it could come from That's anywhere. A good point, actually. It could come from anywhere. You ever watch a show? You'd be like, okay, we all could watch this. And right. then something crazy pop I'm up. Like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Ain't I this, thought this was kid-friendly. God damn yeah. it. Ain't this like a, a, a TBS? Right. So, yeah. Um, Trying that joint. They'd be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, Yo, this is cable. Yeah. 
So have you? So my advice: if you have a fifteen year old of any age, if they come to you on some, yo, I'm ready. The more than likely you on some, nah, fuck all that. You're not ready for nothing. I don't think that'll work. Nah, the best, the best, the best point, the best approach that I can think to take is um, to educate uh, my daughter in that regard. And you know I'm saying with sex, so I ask questions. How do you know you're ready? Mm. Do you know any, what do you know about sex? You know what I'm saying? And then I'm the type of person that likes to ask questions. Somebody presents something to me. I like to ask questions to see how much they think they know. You know what I'm saying? In relation to the topic, if I'm um, knowledgeable on it. So I'll ask questions and kind of see where there are holes in their answers that they may not understand correctly. So depending on the answers that they give, I'll try to fill in those spaces to provide more clarity on clarity on how serious something of this uh, magnitude is for a 15-year-old girl thinking about losing her virginity. And you don't have to scare them, scare them. But I don't think they know that part about, um, you know, when you first get, when you first have sex, that that part. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might feel good to the guy because, of course, he's promoting it. But it don't really feel that good to the girls. So you you are very excited for this situation. But you understand, like, something, like, it's, it's, it's not peaches and cream like you would think. Also, as a father and as a mother, it's hard to explain to your child that, this young man who's going to take your virginity might not be around too much longer. Right. And you want to lose your virginity to somebody you think is special, but as adults, we know that nigga ain't shit. He ain't going to be around <laughs> next week. Uh, he might act like he don't even know you next week and told all his boys he smashed. Right. And now you depressed. Right. And your parents got to fix that. We got to fix that because you decided to be grown. But once again, if you're having these thoughts, it's hard to get it out. So you have to play your part. Protect yourself. Just like Big J said, shout out to DJ Big J in the podcast brothers group. He said, no is no. So even if you get there and you decide to change your mind, no is no. Right. Hit that cell phone. I'm right there. Or you said no. I don't care if he was about to enter. You know what? I changed my mind. He got to get up off you. You understand? So know your rights. Because we know, okay, you're going to have a conversation with me about how you ready. But we've, come on, you're going to have the butterflies. You're going to get scared. Now, he might not be a smooth-ass operator with with, with his uh, uh, game. So when you get there, you're going to get nervous. And mm-hmm. it's going to be that, I, I don't know if I want to do this or not. I know I sold the girl. I lost my virginity to some bullshit. I know I did. I can't remember <laughs> what I said, but I know it was some bullshit. So if you feel like you don't want to do it any longer, you have that right. And I don't think a lot of people know that. You know what I'm saying? So definitely no is no. I don't care when you say no. Y'all could be in the middle of doing things. No is still no. It's important. You just got to educate them. You really got to yeah, educate the kids educate in regards. If you, I mean, I hope that that conversation had, had, had been had prior to that. You know what I'm saying? So that when it does uh, come up, you guys have some type of um, familiarity with the conversation. Um, so, yeah. So... You got to be just try to be prepared and handle it. I think it's important for the way that parents handle information that the kids tell them would play an effect into the decisions that they choose to make. If you act out, no, 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 all the time. Yeah. That, again, congratulations. You That's just, exactly what I'm trying to get at. If you want if you want them aggressive parents, right. you better not be talking to no boys. Yeah. Like, it, congratulations. Your daughter's fucking. You can't do you can't really talk that way. You know what I'm saying? Right. And this is why sometimes the kids might go some go so go somewhere else to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Because they can have they have the confidence. So you gotta ask yourself, does your kid have the confidence to come to you to talk about sex? Or right. just talk about anything. Right. And I and I can question that for myself. Like, do my kids because I'm like the enforcer, because that's what you think as a father is supposed to be. Like mm-hmm. the dad is always the enforcer. Oh, you did something wrong, I'm gonna tell your dad. Like, I don't wanna listen, I'm I don't, I don't wanna want be that. that. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna, wanna that. I don't wanna I mean I do want that, but I don't wanna wear that you want hat the respect. 24/7. You want the respect. Yeah, I want them to know that if they fuck up or if they get on some bullshit, this is the the part of me that you're gonna get. But if every if you're doing what you're supposed to do and everything's cool, then no, nah, I'm not I'm not looking to jump down your throat for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, have the conversation with your children. Also know that also let them know that what can actually happen by doing this, you know what I'm saying? Like he's not gonna be your last. You know, you you think this is a special moment for you. It's probably not for him. How many people out there still talk to the person they lost their virginity to? 
Not me. I haven't seen this bitch in years. Not me. I don't. I don't want to talk to years. The person I'm not I'm looking for you yeah. either. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I ain't been looking for you since that summer in '98. <laughs> Fresh a fiasco. Y'all already know how we give it up, man. And basically, since this stupid thing won't let me click, I can just freestyle it off the top of my head. But New York is going to implicate a law that's going to require there be baby changing stations in the male bathrooms because men are parents too. New Fresh York will kill you. You want to move to New York? Root for Patrick Ewing and them old ass Knicks? New York will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> JB Fox. Yeah. Shout out to JB Fox. Oh, that's fresh, man. Because all the time I be having my son, I be like, yo, how the fuck am I going to change this life? Where are we going to go? Yeah. Then it goes, fuck it. You just going to rock that soil diaper until we get to where we can get you changed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm all about discretion. I'm not about to uh, uh, change my son's diaper and like on the middle of the table with everybody's like eating on the other end and no shit right. like that. Like that's just not it's uncouth. I'm a pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm full of couth. Well, you understand what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it's absolutely fresh. There's no reason why I wouldn't be. Um, I'm confused as to why there were never baby changing stations on the men's restrooms prior to this. Because as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, men have always been parents. Maybe a large number didn't take care of them, but there was still a number that did as to why there was no baby changing stations in the men's bathroom prior to this. I do not know. But it's fresh that it's finally happening. Yeah, I'm going to definitely go fresh. And just like you know, yesterday, we talked about it early in the episode, our brother got married. So we was out. I'm um, in a park, and my daughter needed to be changed. So me, you had to go to the car. I had to go to the car, right? Because I'm thinking, ain't no station in the bathroom. We we don't have those. So I just took it to the car, um, and made it and made it work for myself. Yeah, because fathers are parents too. We go out. We have our uh, we have our kids. I actually, had that little thing where you uh, you strap around your shoulders and the child sits on your chest. Mm-hmm. I even had that on me for a little bit. Like all this stuff um, that. Mothers do, fathers do now. I mean, we've been doing it, but I guess with the social media and the pictures and just being out in the open, people can see it more. But, um, you know, us fathers out here doing our thing, so it's fresh. I hope that it um, basically spreads, like starts in New York, comes to right. Jersey, goes to Philly, and then just goes worldwide because we definitely need that. Shout out to the fathers. Shout out to the fathers, man. Keep doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Factuals out here. Fresher fiasco. 50 Cent in his I Want My Money campaign. Fresher fiasco how 50 Cent is handling I Want My Money. Man, fresh, man. Mm-hmm. 50 do no wrong to me, bro. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. 50 told y'all who he was from day one. And he's been that guy from day one. Why motherfuckers expect him to be any different? Oh, he's older now. He's supposed to be more mature. Bro, Why? Why? Gotta be who you are, man. 50 is one of the most. Listen, 50 is a beast, all right? And everybody know, listen, just because you're not tough enough to go get that $20 that Andrew <laughs> owe you from around the corner that you loaned him 20 years ago, and you ain't, you can't even get on the bus to go to work because you're afraid to ask Andrew for that fucking $20 back because you don't want to look broke. Take a note for 50 cent. Mm-hmm. The man is, as far as I know, a millionaire. The motherfuckers loan you money. He wants the bread back. Now, and the latest victims of 50s, 50s, as as the 50 has his. Yeah, I ain't never peep. I I ain't never catch up to what that was. FOF. Yeah. Because one of the dudes that owed them money was sending him a message explaining him when he was going to pay him back. Instead of calling him 50, he mistyped him and said 50. (laughs) So ever since then, he's been running with the 50. I got got your money. (laughs) But this nigga. Uh, as my brother called him, uh, Rem Tony. <laughs> the nigga name was uh, Rodimy. Well, he I don't know that nigga name. He called him Rem Tony. Rem, t- <laughs> Rem Tony. Rem Tony. Bro, you owe 50, 300 G's. I knew that nigga was lying because that nigga came on and I don't owe 50 no money. See, the thing is, I just bought a house. I'm taking care of my family. I got it. I'm like, bro. Basically, you just explain it to us why you can't pay him back right now. <laughs> That's basically, you just bought a house and you're taking care of your family or reasons why I can't pay 50 cent back. Now, I don't owe 50 money and I'm not giving you shit because I don't owe you, but I just bought a house and I'm taking my family and you want to wait until I got the number one record. And in the words of 50, he said, That's when I want my money. You independent now. Mm-hmm. You got 300K to pay me back. Cough it up. Now, I think the way he goes about doing it is a little unorthodox. He makes like, 
like try to embarrass people in regards to it. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. But at the at the same time, <laughs> it's fucking fifty. We talking about. I won't expect nothing less. So you got the number one R and B album in the country, and you got to worry about fifty. When you got to worry about fifty. <laughs> you better off. But listen, you got to pay that bread. Amari Hardwick got it right. He told him, listen, fifty. 50 loaned me some bread one time. He loaned me 20000 on something. He was like, I can't have my number one fucked up. You're my investment. I need you to be good out here. Mm-hmm. I need you to be good out here. So he, um, he gave he gave Amari 20 Gs, and Amari said that, like, black and brown people need to know this, that when, you get, when somebody loans you money, you can't give them the same money they gave you back because that, person, that person's money that they loaned you could have been making money for them while they loaned it to you. So I gave him his money back plus interest. You know what I'm saying? So I'm with that. I'm all good with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with it. Did you see the picture of him uh, reaching in the closet and saying, Buck, yeah. I know you in there. Hey, Buck, I know you in there. I want my fucking money, <laughs> punk. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with it. Listen, any macho man out there would love to approach anybody that owed them some bread and say, give me my give fucking money. Give me my fucking money. money, punk. Give me my fucking and money. And then he going to post a conversation where he having with Yayo. He's like, hey, you know what? I called you because I was thinking about people who should be giving my money back. He was like, oh, shit, big homie, come on, man. He was like, you know what? I wasn't even talking about you, but now that you said that, I really think you should be giving someone the money back because I've been giving you money for years. <laughs> I've been giving you money for years. He was like, come on, big homie, man. You know I ain't going. You know I ain't got no money to be giving you back. Man. He was like, you want me to shoot somebody? I'll pay you back like that. <laughs> Like, yo, this nigga is wild, man. He said, I wasn't even talking about you. But I wasn't you even talking about you. But now that you mention that, I do feel like you should giving me some of that money back because I've been giving you money for years. A lot of, what, what people don't know about the uh, situation with, what's the hell is his name? How you say his name? Who? Timmy, Ro Timmy? Yeah, something like that. Timmy. Rodham Timmy. Timmy. Rodham Timmy. He's been on power since season one. This is what people don't understand. Right. He was on G-Unit Records. Yep. And so maybe this 300000 comes from him putting money behind his brand. Probably, and 50 yeah. not seeing no type of reward for it. Like, I, number one I got now. You on, I got you on TV. Right. I signed you first. It didn't work out. Then you went independent. Now you got to know. You owe me money because I put money in you. But I get it, though. I if I put money it. into you right. and you ain't put out a record on my label, but you're a somebody because of me. Right. Think about it, people. Think about it. We're all somebody in our own, own rights. But this man is on cable television every year because of who? This man got signed to G-Unit. His first record uh, label was G Unit, and we all know him from Fifty Cent. So now you go to another label and you get the number one hit on my watch. You owe me some money, man. You built that steam up from yeah. from what I was putting the most into you, bro. I'm gonna go facts. I like Fifty way of doing things. I just hope to never owe that man no money. But if I do, he'll get it back with interest. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Curtis Jackson. Pay fifty before I pay my mama. <laughs> before I pay the taxes. Word up. Um, you got fuck what you doing? Hey, son, you ain't paying me that money back. Yeah, mom, I owe 50 first, I man. Owe 50 Damn, I'm going to pay you first. back as soon as I get this shit squared away with him. I, you my mama. You ain't going to do nothing crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> you can wait. Shit. Uh, yes. Can I please be blessed by the smooth sounds of my boy, J.J. S. Fish, please? Fuck you, bro. Fuck you, bro. Oh, bitch ass nigga. Fuck is you doing? Fuck is you doing? This week's fuck is you doing is sponsored by the Podcast Brothers, episode one thirty nine. So we all know we live in a fucked up world, and in a in a in a, in a uh, voice of future. It's an evil world that we live in, and I think we can all agree. And there are people who are trying to figure their, figure their lives out, you know what I'm saying, get things on track, build up a head of steam to go places and do things that they always wanted to do and live a life of comfort. Not luxury, not luxury all the time, but just comfort. Everybody wants to be comfortable. And in order for you to be comfortable, you have to go through you know, uh, the job hiring process, right? And going through the job hiring process, there are a few things that you have to do. You have to be able to pass a background check. Um, some jobs, you got to have a certain amount of credit. And some jobs, you have to pass the drug test. And it's hard to pass a drug test when the lab owner falsifies drug test results. You heard me correct, people. 
Mrs. 36-year-old Brandy Murrah, that's M-U-R-R-A-H, was arrested in Alabama with two counts of forgery after authorities received evidence that someone had forged the results of two drug tests performed by A&J Lab Collections, which is owned by Brandy Mora. Yeah. You got that? The bitch is, the bitch is intentionally falsifying drug results so people won't pass their drug tests for employment. Say you're That's holding. stupid, guys. I didn't Is this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's Hit me with the Lord stupid. Jamar. The fuck are you talking about? Hmm. The fuck are you talking about? Bro, um, now, this was only two counts on which she was caught. But depending on the amount of time that she's owned this lab and the countless individuals that came through to take drug tests, we talk about people applying for jobs, we talk about folks on probation that probably got sent back to jail because she made the, the test negative when it was probably positive. There are probably so many people who were cut short with opportunities and probably sent back to prison because she falsified the drug test. Were some of them probably dirty or negative? Probably. But there's a good chance that majority of them were positive and she intentionally changed them and destroyed these people's lives. I don't get the world, man. I don't get the world, bro. Now, you being the owner of this location, you got bread, right? People get drug tests all the time. Companies outsource laboratories all the time to go through these type of things, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that the employees that they get walking through the door are good to go for employment. And here you are uprooting people's lives by falsifying reports. It's just fucked up. You know what? You get to a point in life where you hear so many fucked up stories, you just question humanity. Mm-hmm. You just question humanity, bro. Like, now I'm thinking back, like, I probably didn't get that job before because my drug t- results went to this bitch's laboratory <laughs> and got tested. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just extremely fucked up. I'm baffled to the thinking of a person that could stoop to this level. You know what I'm saying? Um, it just really shines a light on, oh, and of course, she's white. Obviously, I don't think I need to say that. I don't think a black woman would really go around falsifying reports, drug tests, making them intentionally negative. I don't really see black people, especially a black woman, doing doing such a thing. Not to make it racial. I was just speaking facts. But um, this is a huge travesty. Um, She deserves to get penalized to the 40th degree for these such crimes. And I hope that when they're going back and doing the investigation and uncovering more evidence, I hope they find hundreds of cases where individuals were falsely arrested or falsely missed employment opportunities because of the results of their drug test was altered by the owner of this laboratory. Her name is Brandy Murrah. She's 36 years old, man. 36. 36 36-year-old white lady changing fucking lab results. I'm completely baffled, man. It's disgusting, it's disgraceful, and it's despicable. Brandon Murray, Murray, whatever the fuck your name is, lady. Fuck is you doing, man? Fuck is you doing? Life is hard enough for niggas out here. What is she proving? What is you proving by doing this? You got yours. Let us get, let them get theirs. Let us get ours. You know what I'm saying? You filthy animal. Can't take you, fuck. Fuck is you, boo, man. MS330, shit, I got to take little man to the barbershop. They close at four. Yeah, let's get out of here. We forgot to mention that this is our three-year anniversary episode. Facts. Oh, man, I completely slipped that. Yeah, oh. three years anniversary of the podcast, brothers. We did that. Three years, man. More to come. High five, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, her brother. brother's high five. Uh. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> Throwback. If you like what you heard, man, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Please. Follow us on Spotify. Please. We on Google Podcasts. Yep. Go YouTube. YouTube. Stitcher. Go to thebrotherspod.com. Yeah. Leave your email. It's a chance that you can win some cool prizes. That's what we do. Episode 150, sneaker giveaway. Yes, sir. And this is episode 139. So 150 is coming. Yep. Peace out. Deuces.